Hello, ladies. It's Coach Steph. How are y'all doing? I thought I would pop on in the big group because I accidentally, in the events tab, I made an event for today, but it, it showed up at nine o'clock and I couldn't change it. So, um, yeah, Facebook was being weird. So I decided to come in and say hello on here today. So I kind of wanted to talk about sustaining a lifestyle, a healthy lifestyle. So I had put a poll in a group and this is one of the topics that you guys picked. The first topic was um, getting a flat stomach and I did that live last week, I believe. So if you missed that, you wanna go to the events tab in the group and click on previous and you can see all the previous live uh, trainings that I've done. Um, this was number two, so this is the topic number two that you guys picked, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about that today. This uh, live is gonna be a little shorter than I typically do, but I want you guys to ask me questions, okay? Say hello if you pop on and ask questions um, just about anything regarding um, sustaining a healthy lifestyle, whether that be nutrition, fitness, or mindset. So I am a weight loss and mindset coach. I'm also a registered dietitian. And so I posted on the weekend about the fact that only 2.6% of dietitians are black. And I, th I knew the number was low, but I didn't know it was that low. So I was really surprised. And, I, and now I'm thinking like, you know, it's really, really important for um, black dietitians and women of color to be visible and to let people know that there are people that look like you who can help you through this journey. And with the nutrition part, I find that um, a lot of people are confused or they're trying things that aren't working. And um, this topic is so important. So I really want y'all to use your resources, ask me questions, um, and I'm, I wanna help you as much as possible. So um, say hello if you hop on. Um, check out the events tab for upcoming and previous trainings that I have done on all things nutrition, fitness, or mindset. And um, yeah, we're going to get started talking about building a healthy uh, and sustainable lifestyle. So if you guys are on, sometimes I cannot see the comments, y'all. So I'm going to go to the group real quick because I can't see any comments. Somebody say hello to me because I don't see anybody popping on. So I just want to make sure that I can see your comments because I want y'all to ask. Okay, thank you, Tammy. Appreciate it. Okay, cool. So, building a sustainable lifestyle. If y'all have questions, let me know. I had a little spiel for you today and then you can ask me questions. So, I want to know what your biggest struggle is. Like, what is your biggest struggle when it comes to building a sustainable lifestyle? What kind of thoughts are coming up for you? Like, is it you can't seem to eat consistently well you can't seem to get to the gym is it um, the weekends mess you up is it holidays birthdays is it um, not you know setting boundaries like what what's your biggest struggle with staying consistent like what is the hard part and I, I want to know what are you struggling with and maybe we can work through some of those today on the call what are y'all struggling with this was the number two answer um, on the poll Somebody tell me something. <clears throat> Again, y'all can ask me whatever you like. There might be a little bit of a delay too. You know, struggling with nutrition, you're struggling with mindset. Y'all might hear my son. I hear him, he just came inside. Okay, here we go. Um, not drinking enough water. I only drink when I'm thirsty. Okay, so Elisa. Um, tell me, like, what can you do about that, right? Can we set alarms? Can we, I, what I tell my clients to do every time they eat or drink, they drink like 16 ounces of water first, which is a bottle of water, basically like one of these, one of these water, 16 ounces. So I can chug this. I drink a lot of water. I love water. Um, and so how can you start to focus in on that? Because what happens, let me tell you what happens. When you start focusing in on the things that you need to do versus focusing on the things that you don't need to do, you get the things that whatever you're giving attention to is what you're going to do. 
And then it naturally displaces the unhealthy things. Why? Because you're focusing on what you need to do. So Tammy says energy and fatigue. So, okay. So Tammy, you're saying that you're, you're tired and that kind of is a barrier to you, like staying consistent, getting to the gym, exercising or, or meal planning, right? So let's talk about energy and fatigue. So one of one really counterintuitive thing that's like really, I guess it's not weird if you understand the the um, the chemistry behind it. But if we are active, like if we just even go for a walk or or get in a workout, we actually have more energy. So a lot of people will tell me like I'm I'm fatigued, I'm tired after work, and that's legit, right? We're tired after work. But if you were to just tell your brain I, let me just walk for five minutes. Like I'm literally just gonna walk for five minutes. Likely you will walk and you will walk longer than just five minutes and you actually will have more energy rather than less. Number two about energy, a lot of us are not, and I'm, I'm like going over my notes cause I wrote all this down, but um, a lot of us are not really eating enough vegetables, okay? And so we're gonna talk about like how we can get a little bit more vegetables in because we are, um, a lot of us are nutrient deficient in in the vitamins and minerals that we really need to to function at our highest and best self and so yeah we might be tired right so taking some baby steps to increase our activity even though it sounds counterintuitive it actually does give you more energy and figure out how can we get more veggies in that's going to actually give us um, more of the vitamins and minerals that our body needs so that we don't feel fatigued Okay, so th those were two good ones. Thank you, guys. Okay, so number one, trying to make a lifestyle change by changing your actions and not trying to change your mindset approach is what I see a lot of people do, right? So it's like, okay, um, I need to lose weight, so I'm going to do keto. Or um, I'm, I want to lose weight, so I'm going to do intermittent fasting. And it's always trying to get a result by doing something, right? When, if we back up a little bit and look at our mindset around our approach to doing the thing, we would actually get a lot better result because it doesn't matter what tool you use, right? Keto works, intermittent fasting works, starving yourself works, right? Like. Living a diet works, right? It, it can all work. It depends on how do I want to live my life, right? How do how do how do I want to lose weight, right? What's the best way for me energetically that I'm gonna be able to sustain, that I'm gonna enjoy? Because it's really important that you make this enjoyable. Okay, like think to yourself, how can I make this enjoyable? Um. And so making sure that um, we have multiple tools, right? But then we need to think about our approach differently and we need to think about ourselves differently as well. Um, making sure that you're setting up your environment and that your environment is in line with your goals. Nobody really talks about that, right? Nobody talks about that. Anytime someone asks me like, okay, what do I need to do? Da, da, da. Like nutrition and fitness is like the last things that I talk about because I'm talking about mindset first. Like how do you have negative self-talk? Are you, you know, being a bully to yourself and telling yourself you can't do it and, and that you're embarrassed of yourself or you hate your body, right? Or you're exercising because you hate your body versus exercising because you love your body, right? So what's going on in your mindset? And then Let's talk about your environment. How can you set your environment up for you to be successful, right? Nobody ever discusses that. And so that's a huge thing. We wanna make it, I mean, we'll make our environment to where our, the things that serve us, we wanna make those easier to do, right? So how can I make this easier? Can I set my workout clothes out, um, you know, on Saturday and I pick four workout uh, outfits and so that I have them? Can I put them in my car so that I don't have to come home before I go to work? Can I, um, you know, put my water bottles in the um, refrigerator? You know, 
so that I have so that I'm hydrated. Like, how can you make it easier in your environment to do the things that you know you need to do? And how can I make it harder to do the things that don't serve me? So one of the things I do with my clients, I have them do a kitchen detox. Because if you are trying to make a lifestyle change and you're sitting around with cookies and donuts and like, you know, Kool-Aid in the fridge, that's not setting yourself up for success long-term. It's not. Um, Tammy, goals align with the environment. Yes, your goals have to align with your environment. I love the way you said that. I love the way you said that. So think about your environment and think about the things that make you slip up. Maybe it's people. It might be the people at your job. Right. It might be the pe- it might be, you know, the potluck at work and everybody's bringing food or maybe, you know, corporate bought like donuts or tacos for everybody every week. And that might be something that you need to address. Have you ever sat down and thought, how do I want to show up when these triggers happen? What are your environmental triggers? Nobody talks about that. Right. So that's a huge one. Knowing like who to hang out with. You might have a best friend that's not on the same journey as you. She's not making, you know, the decisions that you need to be making. And you need to sit down and see, like, how do you want to deal with that? How can you set boundaries around your relationship and say, hey, you know what? I'm on like this new thing right now. And I really do want to like go to happy hour every day or every week or whatever but um i'm on this thing right now so i really can't so can we do something that doesn't involve food right how can you set up boundaries those are super duper important okay so number three so number one we talked about um changing your approach and basically changing your mindset number two we talked about um tweaking your environment and how you can make Um, the things that serve you easier to do and the things that don't serve you harder to do, right? So like detoxing your kitchen. If you don't have donuts around the house, you can't just sit around and eat donuts, right? Number three is you are not embodying the person that you want to be. So you must start thinking as your future self. What would, and I always tell myself this, like what would my CEO do? Like, what would the best version of myself do? The woman that I want to be, what does she do in this moment? How does she show up? How does she handle um, boundaries? Like, what kind of habits does she have? What thoughts would she be thinking right now? Super important to, to, and it all goes back to your mindset. Like, what thoughts would she be thinking right now? What would she be doing? Because if you are still identifying with your previous self, this self that is inconsistent, this self that you know, doesn't believe in herself. If you're identifying with that, you're gonna create more of that, right? So you gotta start making a separation, right? From like old self to your new self. And like, okay, this is what I do now. So I always, I tell this story all the time, two people who are smokers, right? They're trying to stop smoking. Both of these people are trying to stop smoking. One person says, or someone comes up to the first person and says, do you want a cigarette? And they say, no, thanks. I'm trying to quit smoking. Second person, they come up to the second person as well and say, hey, do you want a cigarette? And they say, no, thanks. I'm not a smoker. They're already identifying and embodying the person that they want to be. Embodiment is huge because imposter syndrome is like a real thing where you know, you may be doing great for a while, right? We know people who are like on the yo-yo diet, they losing the same 15 pounds over and over again, right? And then it's like, after you get to a certain point, you don't really see yourself as this new person. You're still thinking that you're still the same girl from three months ago, from six months ago. You have to shed her. She has to... She has to, um, I don't want to say go away, but like evolve, right? You have to evolve into another type of person, a person that keeps your word, 
When you say you're going to do something, when I tell myself I'm going to work out four times a week, I keep my word to myself. Right? Because a lot of us are micro quitting. We're quitting on just like small things. Like we'll say I'm going to do this. Oh, I'm going to do this. And then we don't. Right? It's a micro quit. Quitting. You haven't quit your whole journey, but you quit here and there, right? And you don't really trust yourself to show up for yourself consistently enough. That's why you keep identifying with your previous self. Does that make sense? Y'all let me know if this makes sense. Okay. Yes, Tammy says emotional trigger food for thought. Yes. Um, we do eat more. When, yes, we eat more when we are around each other. So we need to know what, what those triggers are, right? Good and bad, because sometimes... People think of emotional eating, right? And they think of like sad, lonely, bored, and you eat things. But then it's also like when you're having a celebration, you might drink a lot of alcohol or you might have a lot of, you know, fast food or restaurant type food that um, isn't serving you. All right. Thank you. She understands. Okay. So talked about mindset, setting up your environment, embodying the person that you want to be and identifying as your new self versus identifying as your old self. Um, number four, you have no reset day. If you are on a journey at least once a week, you need to be resetting and re-evaluating um, your goals. You need to be reflective and say, hey, what, what didn't work well last week? What did work well last week? How do I want to show up for this coming week? Like, what can I do? Right? You must have a reset. And during that reset, you can think about your goals and refocus your mind on your goals. Um, set your intentions for the for the next week, but then also um, you can plan your meals, right? And a lot of us are overcomplicating the food part, y'all. I'm gonna get to that. I'm gonna get to that in a minute. I'm gonna get to that at the end, okay? But um, let me see what I have. Um, so yeah, you have to have a reset day, a designated time where you say, okay. I'm going to put pen to paper and I am going to figure out like, okay, what went well, what did not go well? What are my plans? Do I have an appointment coming up this week during my workout time that I need to move my workout time or reschedule this appointment? Right? Like look at your schedule. What do I have coming up this week? How am I going to be able to fit in these, the habits that I need to have to reach my goal? Um, you know, when I have a, a changing schedule. Yeah. Reset date, reevaluate goals. Yes. Funny. I keep, I keep my word with others, but not to myself. Yes. That is so true. Because why, why do we do that? Why do we do that? Why do we not keep our word to someone else? But when it comes to us, we flake out and micro quit, right? So we got to be more mindful now that we're aware of it, right? We can't claim ignorance. Now it's like, okay, I'm aware of this. Now what am I going to do about it? So number four, you need a reset day. Number five, um, doing the small things consistently versus the big things once in a while, right? So this is a really big one because so many people, they're like, man, I need to lose weight. Let me revolutionize my whole diet and my whole life and change this this week with no reset time, with no reset day, right? This thing is going to just go off without a hitch. No, we have to have a reset day and we have to start small. And those, it is more important for you to do something very small, like that low hanging fruit, something that's, you know, relatively easy for you to do. It's, it's better for you to do that consistently, day after day, show up for yourself. It's better for you to do that than to change like 10 things and only do that once or twice a week, right? So I really tell my clients like literally, how can we make this super simple? How can we make this even more simple? Like on a scale from one to five, if five is the hardest thing that you can do, that's gonna be really hard to be consistent. And one is the easiest thing that you can do. What is like a one or a two? habit practice that we can set an intention to do that we can do repetitively because the repetition is the part that's going to get you the results it's not the one-off oh i had one great day where i did everything i was supposed to do no the repetition is really important hope this is making sense okay so those were 
um, five tips regarding some struggles that you may be having, some um, environmental uh, mindset adjustments that you could be making, right? So I'm gonna give you some tangible tips for nutrition that you can um, implement. So number one, start with water and veggies. So a lot of times people are like, oh, I don't know what to do, or I don't know how, how to start my, my weight loss journey. Start with water and vegetables, right? I have my clients drink 16 ounces of water, one bottle, little bottle of water before every meal and snack, right? So if you can focus in on drinking water, and the goal is usually like half of your body weight in ounces. So if you weighed 200 pounds, your goal for water for the day would be a 100 ounces. Um, so if you start with water and you're focusing on water, and you're focusing on getting your vegetables in, like how many vegetables can I get in? Like when you're planning and you need to be planning your meals, how many vegetables can I can I add in, right? Can I have a veggie at lunch and dinner, but then I kind of also like put in a snack of like um, some little vegetables um, in between my meals too? Like how many vegetables can you get in? Vegetables, as long as they don't have like butter or oil in them, they, are 25 calories roughly per serving so you can eat a lot you can y'all y'all can eat so much food if we eat whole foods that are not like pre-packaged they're just single ingredient foods right um if so if we're eating in a way that is serving us we can actually eat more food so figure out how many veggies and plan in more vegetables and more water in your day i always like to add things when I'm working with people, I add stuff versus taking stuff away, right? Because if we focus on getting in your water and making sure we get, you know, four or five veggies in a day, that automatically displaces the other crap that we probably would have eaten because we're so focused on getting your veggies and your water in that, oh, you look around, oh, I haven't drank any soda in two weeks. Oh, I didn't drink, um, you know, any sweet tea this week, right? Because I was so focused on getting my water. That's abundance mindset. We have to think about what we want versus what we shouldn't or couldn't have, right? So, 16 ounces before a meal, how many veggies can I get in? How many veggies can you get in? <laughs> I tell my clients, non-starchy vegetables, like broccoli, um, cauliflower, uh, asparagus, all those non-starchy vegetables, you can have as many servings as you would like. Why do I say that? Because most people don't eat enough vegetables. They don't eat enough vegetables. And so vegetables actually, they require you to chew a lot more. It slows you down. That actually helps you to feel more full because you're eating slower. Um, it takes about 20 minutes for us to really actually realize that we're full. I always tell my clients too to eat to satisfaction and not until you're stuffed, right? So if you're eating vegetables, they're already low in calories, you're eating slow, you're getting full faster, they have tons of fiber, fiber is going to help you feel full um, and it's going to help you feel fuller longer, eat as many non starchy vegetables as you would like. Yeah. And so when you're doing that, right, when you're focused on eating as many non starchy vegetables as possible then you're not eating the fast food at Taco Bell. You're not eating McDonald's. You're trying to get these vegetables in, right? Um, yeah, and so then when you're planning too, think about like how many veggies, vegetables I can get in, but also how many different colors? How many different colors can I get in, right? Can I have, do I have an orange? Do I have a purple today? Do I have an orange today? Right, like the colors and the pigments of the food um, actually, have nutrients right so most of the nutrients is in the skin or in the hull of the um, vegetable and so those deep pigments um, have antioxidants and the deeper the pigment the more antioxidants the more nutrients that the vegetable actually has right so you want to think about and so like red um, vegetables have different nutrients than the green ones and they, that has different uh, nutrients than the orange or the white like onions or you know so you want to 
have a variety of colors so that you can get a blend of all of those nutrients that each color has to offer. Hope I under, like, said that correctly. Um, what if we're putting them in a smoothie? I love smoothies. Here's what I always say about smoothies though. You have to watch, like if you're putting a lot of fruit, fruit, there's nothing wrong with eating fruit. They also have fiber and nutrients. Um, but just watch the portion sizes because sometimes those big old like ninja uh, blender things are like really big. So just watch the portion sizes. Don't put fruit juice, put, um, you know, if you like almond milk or oat milk or whatever, um, instead of fruit juice, just to decrease the glycemic load so that you're not like drinking a lot of um, sugar at one time. But then also add in protein or fat. Okay, so that's gonna decrease your glycemic load and not spike your insulin so much. So you can add like a fourth of an avocado. Sounds nasty, but it does. It actually tastes really good. It, it actually doesn't have a taste at all. It just makes it creamy. You can add in um, Greek yogurt, add protein, right? Add chia seeds. They have milled flax seeds that are real um, fine. You can throw that in there. You can add protein powder, right? So make sure in your smoothies, like you can put your put your greens in there, put your fruit, put your liquid, and then make sure you have some sort of protein or fat, right? I love the chia seeds because they have um, healthy fat and fiber. Okay. Um, I guess I heard love veggies and water. Cool. I use oat milk or water. Yes. Okay. So water. We add in veggies. How many veggies are we getting in, right? Number three, protein with each meal and snack. So protein is the most important macronutrient, whether or not you're trying to lose weight or gain muscle. You must get enough protein. And so I always say protein in every meal and snack, right? So that there's no question, like you're, you're, you're eating your protein. So if you're a meat eater, it's a lot, it's typically easier to get your protein in just because like, you know, meat has lots of protein. Um, but it's definitely possible also if you're, you know, following a vegetarian or vegan diet, okay? So the number four, you wanna keep your meals simple. So sometimes we overcomplicate things, we overthink it, right? So you just wanna pick maybe two days of meals, breakfast, lunch, dinner, then breakfast, lunch, dinner, and then rotate those two throughout the week, right? And then if you needed a third one, you know, it could be something super simple that doesn't really, you know, require preparation. But don't make like, Monday I'm having breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then I'm having a different breakfast, lunch, and dinner for Tuesday, and a different one for Wednesday and Thursday. It's just, that's too much, it's too much, right? Keep it super simple. How can I make this simple, right? Just make two different meals, rotate them throughout the week, and that's like super simple, and only Pick one new recipe. Like, don't make all new recipes. I ain't never made none of these things, and now I'm about to make 55 different meals with 55 different ingredients, and I'm not familiar with this recipe. Unless you like to cook. Some people like the adventure. I'm a dietitian, y'all. I don't. I know I don't love cooking, right? But I also don't like eating out. So I'll cook, but it's not my favorite thing to do. It's really not. Um. So how do you know if you're getting enough protein? Is there a limit? So you can always track it. What I find, there's multiple ways to do this. You can track your macros and you can put in my fitness pal, the app, you can track it that way, right? It tells you how many grams of protein you need. But you don't have to be exact. Most people can get results without having to calculate like each gram, right? You can do food groups, so a lot of times, um, with my clients, for example, I, like I said, like eating um, protein with every meal, right? You're not necessarily counting grams of protein, but I am saying a, a serving of protein is the size of your, size and thickness of your palm, right? Eat that at every meal. Have some sort of protein source at a snack, right? And we're not um, counting grams, but we're counting like food groups basically. And so that's a simpler way in my opinion and you can still get results. Like you can still get results. You don't have to be like super duper exact with the numbers. Um, and is there a limit? 
I mean, yeah, there is a limit because it has, protein has calories. Um, and you want a, a balanced plate over the course of your day. You want protein, you want fat, and you want carbohydrates. So that number is gonna be different for every person. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, only one new recipe a week, and then focus on what you have versus what you should have versus what you should not. And I think I covered that earlier of like, where your attention goes, energy flows, right? So if you're focusing on what you need to have versus like, oh, I can't have cake or I can't, I'm on a diet right now, so I can't have this and I can't have that and I can't have that. That just makes you want it even more, right? Just shift your focus to being intentional about what you can have and what is gonna serve your goals. So starting there, right? There are several things that I talked about that if you're missing some of those, right? Start there. Be consistent with that before trying to add on, right? So I didn't wanna make this live too long. Kayla is coming on, I believe at eight um, in about 30 more minutes. Um, she is the, the founder of this group and our one year anniversary is coming up or is today. So I, I know she's gonna come on and she has lots of announcements for you, for you guys. Um, we have some exciting things coming up. So I'm super duper 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 excited. Um, and um, I have more events coming up. So I think next, next Wednesday, for those ladies who have PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome, we have a naturopathic doctor um, who will be, I'll be interviewing her on the, on live. And um, she's gonna be talking about that. So you don't wanna miss that. I know over the weekend I posted something about it and lots and lots of people have had things to say about it. So you definitely wanna tune in, go to the events tab. I don't think I've made the event yet. So in about an hour, go to the events tab and um, Check that out, RSVP for it so that you get notif notified. So, yeah, where your attention flows, energy goes. Yes, that is true. I got that from Tony Robbins. Um, yeah, so thank you guys for watching. If you have questions or if you watch the replay, um, ask me anything that you would like to in the comments. Um, stay tuned, Kayla is going live, I think in about 30 minutes, so. Um, Thank y'all for watching. I'll talk to you soon.